Hi, welcome to this, the second video in my series on moments. And in the first video, what we looked at was essentially that if we had a point O and we had a force acting at a distance from O, it was perpendicular to O, and it acted at a distance, say, D meters, let's say that force was F newtons, then the moment of that force about O was a measure of the amount of turning effect it can have. And that moment was equal to the force multiplied by the distance, FD in other words. Now in this video what I'm going to do is extend that idea where we've got a horizontal beam and it rests on one single support. And I'm going to show you how we can write out the equations for a beam like this in equilibrium where we can work out distances, masses and reactions from supports. And I've got two examples to demonstrate this uh, for you. And these are quite common types of problems that you can get on this. So certainly would encourage you to have a look at these. If you feel that you would like to do them yourself, if you've got feel you've got sufficient knowledge to do this, you might like to pause the video and just have a go at these and check you're working against mine. Okay, well let's just see if you did have a go how you would approach this problem. Well first of all, for this first one we've got a seesaw is made from a uniform plank of length 3 meters and mass 12 kilograms. We've got a girl here of mass 30 kilograms sits on one end and a boy of mass 40 kilograms sits on the other side. And what we've got to do is find the distance the boy sits from the center in order to keep the seesaw horizontal. And we've also got to find the reaction at the support. Now, if we were to put the forces acting on the plank, we've got the girl's weight. Her mass is 30 kilograms, so her weight would act downwards, and that would be mg, 30g in this case, 30g newtons. And as for the boy, his mass is 40 kilograms, so his weight would be 40g newtons. Now, at this point, what I want to do is just say to you, this boy obviously can't sit at the end here. If, if he did, what would happen, let's just move him to the end. I think from common experience you would know that if this boy was to sit on this end, because this boy has a bigger mass than the girl, then the seesaw would want to turn in a clockwise sense about the pivot here. The boy would just go towards the ground. So in order to keep this seesaw balanced, the boy's got to move forward towards the point here where the seesaw is pivoted. And it's for that reason that we've got to find the distance that the boy sits from the center here. Let's call that distance x, x meters. And we know that the seesaw is a uniform plank of length 3 meters. So its weight of 12 kilograms must act at the center here. So it must mean that the distance from here to here must be one and a half meters. Because the plank is uniform and has a length of 3 meters. I need to put that weight of the plank in. And it's going to act at the center because it is uniform. So we just put that in here. It's going to act through that point that it pivots about. The mass of the plank is 12 kilograms, so that's going to be a weight of 12 g newtons acting downwards. And there's going to be a reaction from here pushing upwards, stopping that plank from falling towards the ground. And let's call that reaction R, R newtons. 
So there's no other forces now acting on this plank. Just the downward forces coming from the weights and the upward force, the reaction from the plank resting on this support. So how are we going to get x, the distance that the boy sits from the center here? Well, the way we do this is by taking moments. Moments about this point here. Let's call this point O. Now, the notation I'm going to use is the notation I pointed out in the previous tutorial. We tend to use M for moments. I'm going to say I'm going to take moments about O. And it doesn't matter which sense you have, whether it be clockwise or anti-clockwise. Try it in the opposite sense to the way I do it. You should find you get exactly the same answer. But I'm going to go for a clockwise sense as being positive. So in other words, when we talk about the moments of our forces about O, we'll start with the boy here. Remember, it's going to be the force times the distance to O. So the force is acting downwards. It's going to want to turn the seesaw in a clockwise sense, so it's going to be a positive moment. So it'll be the force, 40 G, multiplied by the distance back to O, which is going to be X, 40 GX. Now we'll take the girl. The girl is on the other side of the point where the seesaw is balanced. And for the girl, her moment is going to be 30 G times 1.5. But we've got to be careful because for the girl, the girl would want to go downwards, would want to turn in an anti-clockwise sense about O. And that's in the opposite sense to this. So this will be minus, and then it'll be the force, 30 G, times the distance back to O, 1.5. Now we've got these two forces here, the weight of the plank and the contact force of R Newtons. Now when it comes to taking moments for these forces, they go through O. And so, if we stuck to the formula, the force, say the weight, 12g, times the distance to O, well, it's going to be zero. So, in fact, this has no turning effect. The 12g newtons doesn't provide any turning effect about O. And the same argument holds for the contact force, R newtons. R times zero, the distance to O, gives zero. And this is true about any force that passes through the point that you're taking moments about. It provides no moment. And it's a point we'll be coming back to time and time again in questions on moments. So these are the only two forces causing a turning effect about O. But the rod, or plank here, is in equilibrium. So the overall turning effect about O must be equal to zero. So there's my moments equation. All I need to do now is just solve it for X. And because it's got G in each of the terms here, I could divide through by G. I could cancel it out. And then if I just Rearrange this, I've got 40x equals 30 times 1.5. So if I do that, I've got 40x equals 30 times 1.5, which is, in fact, 45. And if I divide both sides by 40, I end up with, therefore, x equals 1.125. So the distance x is 1.125 meters, okay? Now, for the next part, we've got to work out this contact force of R Newtons. And to do that, all we do is we resolve forces. We look at the resultant force 
in either the upward direction or the downward direction. Again, it makes no difference, but I'm going to take upwards as being positive. So when it comes to looking at that resultant force, I've got the force of R acting upwards. I've got the weight of the girl, which acts downwards. So that's going to be minus 30 G newtons acting downwards. Minus because it's in the opposite sense. The same is true for the weight of the boy. That would be minus 40 G. And the same for the weight of the plank, minus 12 G. And this resultant force is equal to zero because it's in equilibrium. It's neither moving up nor down. So we just need to rearrange this to get R. And so if I add 30G, 40G and 12G to both sides, I end up with therefore R equals 82G. If I take G to be 9.8, then therefore R turns out to be 82 times 9.8, the general constant that we tend to take G for. And what do we get? Well, it's 803.6 newtons. Okay, so that's a typical example where we can find out a distance and we can find out a contact force by taking moments and by resolving. Now I've got another example here which again is about a horizontal rod resting on one single support. Let's just read through it and if you feel that you'd like to have a go at this again just pause the video and try it out. Come back when ready and uh, you can uh, see my work solution. But essentially what we've got then is a uniform rod AB of mass 10 kilograms of length 6 meters rests horizontally on a support 2 meters from A. So let's just draw this rod first of all. If we just put it up here we've got our rod. Okay, Let's call it AB. It's a uniform rod of length 6 meters. So the weight, first of all, is going to be 10 G Newtons acting halfway across this rod. So if we just put that there, the weight's going to act downwards. That would be 10 G Newtons. And we would know that this distance is 3 meters and this distance is 3 meters. But apparently it rests horizontally on a support 2 meters from A. So we'll just draw that support in 2 meters from A. We'll put it about there. Okay. So there's our support. Let's call this O. And it rests 2 meters from A. So that'll be 2 meters. This distance from O to the where the center is is going to be another one meter and then this distance back here is going to be three meters. Now we're told then that masses of m kilograms and four kilograms are attached to the ends a and b respectively. So if I attach a mass of n kilograms at a then the weight will act downwards it will be mg. mg newtons. And I've got Another mass attached at B of 4 kilograms, so the weight would act downwards, and that would be 4G newtons. Now I'm not finished there because these forces would want to pull the plank, or in this case a uniform rod, downwards. But it doesn't fall downwards because it's resting on this support here. So there'll be an upward force, which we'll call the reaction R newtons. And so for this question, we've got to find M, the mass here, and the reaction at the support, R. So to do again a question like this, what we do is we take moments about O, and then we do a resolving equation. We resolve vertically. 
Okay, so let's now turn to doing that then. Let's take moments about O. And again, we need a sense for the moment that we take. It's arbitrary, it doesn't matter which way we do it, as long as we stick to the system that we have. I took clockwise in this one. I'm going to take anti-clockwise. And the reason why I'm taking anti-clockwise is because I can see that it would make this part, when I work with the force mg, it's going to make it positive. Because just like in a seesaw, this force down here is going to want to turn about O in the anti-clockwise sense. So let us just work with this. If we take moments about O, we're going to have mg times the distance to O, 2. So that would be mg, the force, multiplied by 2. Let's take the 10g newtons here. Now, just like in a seesaw, if it's pivoted about here, the 10g newtons is going to want to turn in a clockwise sense about O. So this is going to be in the negative sense to this. So you'll have minus the force 10g multiplied by the distance back to O, which is 1 meter. And then we've got the mass at B. We've got its weight here is 4g newton. So that force would want to turn about O in a clockwise sense. So it's going to be negative according to the sense that I've set up here. So it will be minus the force 4g multiplied by the distance back to O, which will be now 3 meters plus the 1 meter, a total of 4 meters. And as for the force R, it's the same argument that we had over here, that since R passes through the point O that we're taking moments about, there'll be no turning effect, no moment coming from this force, because it would be R times the distance to O, which would be zero. R times zero is zero. So any force passing through your point where you take moments about has no turning effect. So we've got the resultant moment of all of these forces. But because the rod is in equilibrium, that resultant turning effect, that resultant moment, in other words, must be equal to zero. So we've got an equation here which we can solve for m. We can divide through by g, it's in every term. And so, therefore, if we rearrange this, this term here is 2m. So we'll just say, therefore, we've got 2m. And we've got minus 10 here, minus 16, that's minus 26. If I add it to both sides, I get 2m equals 26. Divide both sides by 2, and I end up with m equaling 13. Now it's important that you do realize that you can take moments in any sense. I would encourage you to try taking moments in a clockwise sense about O. If you do, then this term would be minus, this term would turn out to be plus, so too would this term turn out to be plus. When rearranged, you'll get exactly the same answer for M. So it doesn't matter which way you take your sense. OK? Now, as for finding the contact force R, what we do is we resolve. We resolve in a vertical sense. And again, you can go either upwards or downwards as positive. I'm going to take upwards purely because I can see that it would make R a positive term, easier to handle. And so when I do resolve upwards, we've got all of R acts upwards. And then we've got these three forces which act downwards, so they're going to be negative. We've got minus mg, minus 13g in other words. We've got minus 10g, and we've got minus 4g. 
And so that resultant force, because this rod is in equilibrium, must equal zero. We can rearrange this now to find out what R is by adding 13G, 10G and 4G to both sides. That gives us R is a total of 27G. And if you take G to be 9.8, then R turns out to be 264.6 Newtons. Okay? Right, okay, so hope that's given you some idea then of how we can go about questions like this where we've got a horizontal beam or plank resting on a single support. And to do questions like this, we generally work out the moment about the support and we also involve a resolving vertically equation. And that should see you through. That should see you through for examples like this. Okay? Now in my next video, we're going to continue with this theme of horizontal rods, but we're going to look at them on not one support, but on, say, two supports.